NPM and left pad, have we forgotten how to program? So right now, I, I will say that I'm immediately excited about this article specifically, just because I do feel like when you have easy access to the ability to store libraries, by this very concept, your libraries become more and more atomic to the point where we see something like this. So I'm very curious what the hell this article is about, and I'm really, I, I mean, I'm personally very excited. It was posted a long time ago, but this still could be a very good, good article. So let's do this. Enhance. Enhance. Okay, developers, time to have a serious talk. Are you, is you let's see, are, as you are probably aware, this week React, Babel, and a bunch of other high-profile packages on NPM broke. The reason why they broke is rather outstanding. A simple NPM package called LeftPad that was a dependency on their code. Okay, so I remember hearing about this. I actually remember hearing about this. I never read up on what happened. I just remember that it just like the entire ecosystem halted for a day. I don't remember this at all or what happened. Left pad at the time of this writing had 11 stars on GitHub. The entire package is 11 simple lines that implement a basic left pad string function. In case those links ever die, here's the entire code. All right, hold on. Left pad stir char. Stir equals. I already hate this code. I equals negative one. Okay, I hate this code even further. If char, if not char, and char does not equal zero. I hate this code even more. Length equals length minus. Okay, yeah. While i plus plus is less than length. I hate this code. This iterative string mutation like this is just the worst. This is just like the worst. <laughs> what? Why no string builder? There's no string build. You don't, I mean, technically in JavaScript, you just use an array. And that's like your string builder <laughs> because it's JavaScript. Hey, it's JavaScript. F you. Okay. <laughs> Hey, what is that memory? F that memory, okay? If you're not using it, we use it, okay? What are you? CPU? F you too, CPU. We're JavaScript. All right, anyways. Uh, is this heap allocated? Yes. Everything in JavaScript is heap allocated other than SMEs. SMEs, small integers. Small integers use a heap pointer, but the first bit in a in the heap pointer, I believe, is either a 0 or a 1. I can't remember which one of the two, but one of them designates this object lives on the lives on the heap. The other one designates that this object is actually an integer, a small integer, a SME, okay? Uh, what concerns me here is that so many packages and projects took on a dependency for a simple left padding string function rather than developing, taking two minutes to write the basic function themselves. Not only that, but this is just a terribly implemented piece of code. You could have used new array fill with that character. New array fill with that character, join empty, plus that other string, bada bing, bada boom, you're done, right? Like it, it could have been, it, it, it literally could have been one, it could have been one line of code. It could have, it literally, it literally could have been one line of code. Unless fact, in fact, let's just, uh, let's just do that one line of code. Okay, hold on, I have to jump over to here because I still don't know how to use the Firefox console. Yeah, I'm not a real web dev, okay? For those that don't know, function left pad, let's jump in here. We had a string, we had a length, and we had a character. Okay, awesome. So let's go like this. Let's go uh, return new array uh, stir length minus length, right? Wait, it's the other way around, huh? Uh, length minus stir length. Awesome. Fill. Now we just need to fill it with the proper character. So we have to go like this. Uh, not char and char does not equal zero. We will provide a blank line else char join empty plus string and there we go and i believe i just did it i think that's it i think that's it left pad foo uh let's go five and there you go yay my goodness i wrote it i wrote left pad everybody it was so hard I People, it would take, it literally takes longer for you to find this package on NPM than it does for you to write 
this stupid ass code. Okay? This is like asking ChatGPity to write this code for you. You would have to go to ChatGPity.com. You would then have to be logged in. You would then have to type out your dumbass question in in the ChatGPities. Oh, you want me to you want me to benchmark it? Okay, that's it. We're benchmarking it. Shit, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Fine, we're benchmarking it. We're gonna benchmark it, okay? Let's mark some benches, okay? Vim, uh, fuck you, chat, dot, uh, JS, because, you know, we're, we're, we're masochists. Okay, there's my delicious one. Then we're gonna have function, uh, left pad two, which is gonna have sur, len, and char, and let's go back here. Let's just take all the inners. Bam, bada, bam. Uh, uh, can we all, like, can we all just put a pause right here and go, How'd you, how the hell did you get a space? Where the hell did you get a space from? Where did you get a space from? All right, do one of those. There we go. We got this thing. I put that in there. Get some proper indenting. I don't know. Nobody knows what happened there. So there we go. We have two of these. So now we need a, uh, a function, uh, function run that takes in a function to run. It has the args. And then we also want a function. We want a count and we want the args to be passed in. There we go. This is looking pretty dang good. And then we're going to go like this. Const start equals performance dot now. Bam. And then we're going to go like this. Uh, whoopsies. Let's go. No, it's the other way. There we go start there we go backwards for let i equals zero i has to be let's then count plus plus i do one of those do one of those and then of course go function uh can we do a call and just go null args can i just do that i mean i guess i could technically apply apply would probably be the way to go huh yeah right isn't that is that isn't that what apply is uh, you're cheating, YouTube. No one's cheating. All right, so there we go. We have that little run. So now let's do a couple runs really quickly. Uh, let's go run a function. Let's go run uh, left pad. And then we're going to have, how about, let's go 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. There we go. You should always do that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? It's it's the way to go. It's honestly the way to go. Console.log. And then we're going to throw in here, run. Oh, fun. I should have called that fun. Can we call it fun? Yeah, we're going to call that fun. That seems better, right? Left pad this one. Uh, what is our count? Will be X. Then we should have arguments. How about our argument is this? It's going to be foo, and it's going to be X. So it's going to get larger and larger and larger. Mm, actually, we should probably double. Can we double this up? Can we double this up? I think we could double this up. So let's go for each. Uh, uh, why? Why not? Look at these beautiful named things. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. So we're going to do it on each one of these. And let's go like this. Uh, X, Y, boom, boom, boom. Uh, left pad. Bam. Some of the most disgusting code of my lifetime. Left pad. Uh, two. There we go. D. Give them the D. Two. Awesome. There we go. Fantastic, right? Uh, and now go no... All right, which one did better, mine or theirs? Looks like mine is... Well, what do we get here? Oh, I don't have I don't have Tmux, no wonder I couldn't do anything. All right, left pad with 10. It goes to here, left pad with this one. Okay, so it looks like it's, looks like mine is slower and then maybe faster? Looks like left pad uh, do again. Mine is slower. Theirs is, oh, dude, I got dominated on that one. Uh, there's mine. There's this one. I got dominated on that one. Then we did this one, and I got dominated. Mine's slower. Wrecked. I work at Netflix, by the way, everybody. Turns out I am the noob, okay? I am the noob. Damn. Looks like I suck. Netflix, by the way, junior bench pad start, please. Noob, noob. I have, dude, I can't believe I've been caught red handed. Anyways, all right. As a result of learning about left pad disaster, I started investigating the NPM ecosystem. Here are some of the things I observed. There are packages called IsArray that has 880,000 downloads a day. Ah, fill function is probably trash, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, 
It has, let's see, it has 72 dependent NPM packages. What is wrong with you, JavaScript? JavaScript ecosystem, stop being stupid. There's a package called is positive integer. It has three dependencies. It had three. Like you needed something else. This can't be real. A fresh install of the Babel package includes 41,000 files. <laughs> Is that still true? Does it still 41,000 files to parse to to literally it's a translator. It's not it doesn't even compile. It's a it's a trans you know, oh my, it's transpilation. It's changing it from one language to another and this is just the core of the changing. Blank JSPM. I don't know what this is. PMBM based template app starts with 28,000 files. On what possible plane of existence is this a better solution to past problems? How are hundreds of dependencies and 28,000 files for a blank project template anything but overcomplicated and insane? I am. I'm on this team right now. I am on this team. That that does sound. That's this feeling. This this does feel a little nutty. Uh, I get the impression that NPM ecosystem participants have created a pension for micro packages rather than to write any functions or code. It seems that they prefer to depend on something that someone else has written. It feels to me as if the entire job of an NPM participating developer is writing the smallest amount of code possible to string existing library calls together in order to create something new that functions uniquely for their personal or business needs. Okay, how about this one? I actually want to hear from you guys. Press 1 in the chat if you think this is a problem. Press 2 in the chat if you don't think it is. You think like, hey, this is just what it, this is just what it takes to develop app, apps. Okay, we got some 2s in there. We got a couple 2s. There's some 2s in there. A lot of 1s. It used to be a problem. Oh, NPM's gotten better. Really? I didn't realize that. Is that true? NPM's better now? I, I don't believe you. <laughs> like, I don't. <laughs> Use PNPM. Okay, that, oh, that solves the problem? That makes left pad okay? PNPM is actually better than NPM because it takes the dumpster fire, but it's prettier. Shut up. Functions are not packages. <laughs> functions are too small to make into a package and a dependency. Pure functions don't have cohesion. Uh, they are random snippets of code and nothing more. Who really wants a cosine dependency? Are we really like a trigonometry dependency instead, which encompasses many tricky functions that we don't have time to write ourselves? This is much more akin to how .NET or other frameworks create a core library of basic functionality. Such a library is vetted by the creators of the language and pretty much guaranteed to be correct and bug-free. I do like this. I think this is a good way to look at things. There is a huge value in having like a little bit more terse packaging. Uh, it is true. A cosine dependency is nutty. Trigonometry, probably fine. But then you're like, but I don't really need inverse tangent, so therefore I wouldn't need the whole thing. There's absolutely no guarantee to what someone else has written is correct or even works well. Even if correct, is still uh, is it the most optimal solution possible? At least when you write the code yourself, you can easily modify it to fix bugs and improve its efficiency. Not that there should be many bugs in one-line functions. 
Second, if a package's logic is correct, I can't help but be amazed by the fact that developers are taking on dependencies for single-line functions that should be able to write with their eyes closed. In my opinion, if you cannot write a left pad is positive enter or is array function in five minutes flat, including the time you spend Googling, then you don't actually know how to code. Let's go! This guy is a savage! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, this is literally the greatest line I have ever read in my opinion or in my lifetime. This is so good. This is so good. I'm going to tweet it with absolutely no context. People are going to people are going to get so angry at this. Oh, this is so good. This is so damn good. We'll see we'll see at the end of this how many how many people get pissed off. I know there literally is a array, array dot is array. Yes. Any of these would make a great code screening interview question to determine whether or not a candidate can code. Yeah, I mean, it is. Elon might actually ban you for this. <laughs> Finally, stringing APIs together and calling it programming doesn't make it programming. <laughs> oh, it's some crazy form of dependency hacking that involves the cloud over-engineering things and complexity far beyond what's actually needed to create great applications. This article is just savage. What's worse is that any of your code or third-party dependency code has a bug or breaks. You won't know how to debug or fix it if you don't know how to program. <laughs> I mean, it's facts. I mean, obviously, this was written before Chat Jeopardy, so maybe. Every package that adds yet another dependency to your project, uh, let's see, hold on, strive for as few dependencies. Every package that you use adds yet another dependency to your project. I mean... By definition, this is a correct statement. It's unarguable, okay? Unarguable. Dependencies, by their very na name, are things you need in order for uh, your code to function. The more dependencies you take on, the more points of failure you have, not to mention the more chance of for error. Have you vetted any of the programmers who have written these functions that you depend on daily? This is actually a really good call-out. This is for every single language. Which is just like, you know, when you do take on a dependency, you are taking on the risk of whoever is the programmer who made that package. And I think it's very easy for me. There's this like weird assumption I think that programmers make that if it's a package, it's good. Which is not true at all, right? It's not, it's, it's not true at all. It, there is definitely something about that. It's just somebody else writing them, right? Supply injection, yeah, then there's also supply chain injections, blah, 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 blah. Take on a dependency for any complex functionality that would, uh, let's see, take on a dependency for any complex functionality that would take a lot of time, money, and or debugging to write yourself. Things like database access layer. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a good call out. An ORM, you should not hand roll your own ORM. There's already ORMs out there. If you're going to do it, do it, right? Uh, and if there's not one for your language, say you're using some newer language like uh, Odin, I don't know if they have an ORM, then that's like a great, this is a great example of, when you should write yours versus when you have to depend on it. Or a caching client uh, should be dependencies because they're complicated and the risk of dependency is worth the risk of saving and efficiency. Yep, cache is super hard to do. For anyone that's written any le level of caching, it's extremely hard. But for the love of all that is programming, write your own bloody basic programming functions. Take on dependencies for these one-liners is just nuts. Don't believe me? Just ask the Reass team how well their week has been going and whether they wish they had written those 11 lines for left padding a string themselves <laughs> savage this is just savage i love this article i love this article i i, I love this article this is fantastic all right how, how did our tweet do how, how did our tweet do where what are we sitting at do we get anyone angry here? Yet another base take? Yep, absolutely. None of those are real words. You just made them up to sound smart. Let's go. To be honest, that should uh, even be possible in a language, one that doesn't already know. Yeah. Uh, people hold your horses, and then someone links it. Okay, reasonable. Watch Copilot and Jippity import these modules in its code. Yeah, so that's actually kind of an interesting thing, which is in today's world, we kind of already have this now with Copilot. Now you just get to import the shitty code 
via some auto magic function. Like I've showed this, I've showed this a lot of times. I'll show it again really quickly. Uh, do we have any? Do we have any? Can I? Let's see. Uh, YouTube. Let's see. Yeah, I, I, I could probably just go to YouTube and just go test.ts uh, and go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, go up here. Do this thing and just go uh, function uh, quick sort. I've showed this a few times. There we go. Actually, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Okay, good. This is good enough. So if you look at this function, this is quicksort. I can tell almost immediately that this is quicksort. Uh, wait, can I? Yes. Yes, this looks like quicksort. What you don't realize that's happening right here is that quicksort, one of the reasons why quicksort is incredible is that quicksort is what is referred to as an in-memory sorting algorithm. So merge sort is not an in-memory algorithm. Uh, uh, sorting algorithm. It requires you to make multiple copies of the array and kind of re-stitch them back together into the new array. It is an n log n memory with an n log n runtime, whereas quicksort is a is a o of one memory versus a uh, n log n running time. Now that can be very beneficial because requiring memory actually does take time, right? It's not straightforward. And so when you look at this thing right here, what I see is that okay, array. Slice. So that is a copy. Why are we slicing at one? Well, that's because we picked the pivot at zero. Picking the pivot at zero is considered one of the worst practices you can do for quicksort. You just wouldn't know that if you just grab this. Uh, so slice one, that's a copy of an array. Filter, that's a copy of an array. We do it again. We slice one. So there's the same work twice, right? This is a, Now we're on to three copies of the array. We then filter. That's four copies of the array. Then we're going to quick sort the left. Okay, we're going to concat. So the output of this will create a new array with just the pivot added to it. Then we're going to concat it again. It's going to create yet another one on this side. So it literally is a minimum of 5x copying that is going on. 5x. That's 5n log n as it goes down. That's a lot of n log n, okay? That's a lot, that's copy sort. This is a lot of copying. So just so you know, just because somebody wrote it in JavaScript and just because it exists doesn't mean that whoever wrote this wrote it well, okay? <laughs> yes, it's big O oof. <laughs> 5x equals one half grand Cardone. <laughs> oh my goodness. Chat, you you are wild today. The name is you're bad at programming. <laughs>